This is Jonathan Agger, fifth pro boxing fans, joined by ESPN's Mike Coppinger here at the aftermath of uh, Teofimo Lopez becoming two-weight world champion tonight, beating Josh Taylor. Uh, Mike Tia is brilliant best. What do you think of it? Like you said, he was brilliant. I mean, he left no doubt in there. He beat a very, very good fighter in Josh Taylor. And Tifimo Lopez, he hurt him several times, buckled him with shots, sent him really into the ropes, never let up other than that. I think it was the 10th round that he took off. Just a brilliant performance. And, you know, he's the number one guy at 140 pounds. And it just seems like in the boxing world, you know, things change just like that. Did, did people jump too quickly to conclusions about Lopez before the fight, or is, was it just based on his form going into this fight? I think it was a bit of both, but that's what we all do, right? We jump to conclusions and we make narratives. And, I mean, look, Lopez hasn't looked good since he beat Vasily Lomachenko in October of 2020. I mean, George Cambosis, he loses too. He, I thought he lost Sandra Martin. That was a very close fight. And I think the majority of people thought that Martin pulled it out. Um, and then against uh, Pedro Campa in that you know, debut at 140 pounds, he did not look all that good. I mean, even though he got the stoppage. So maybe, maybe Tifimo Lopez is a guy that needs everyone counting him out. Maybe he's a guy that just needs to get up for the opponent. Scoring-wise, what's the correct scores to have, in your opinion? You know, I, I had it 116, 112, 84. Uh, I think the range was probably, you know, 84, 10, 2 would, would it be okay. I mean, certainly Taylor won the first round, and then I think it was that tenth round, like I said, that Lopez barely threw a punch and was just taunting. So you got to say there's probably a third round in there. Um, I know two judges had it at 115, 113. I didn't have it that way, but you know, it's only one round off my car. Not crazy to me. In terms of Josh Taylor, obviously the inquest will begin. Uh, is it just fair to say you've just been by the better man tonight? I know he made no excuses, but what, what's next for him? I think what's next for him is hopefully um, you know an easy fight at 147 pounds to get his feet wet in there and you know really see what he has. I mean I know he's 32, but he's had a lot of bad injuries, um, a lot of punishing fights. Um, and they're not even though he hasn't had that many fights, he's had a really tough road with Ivan Branchek and Victor Postal and Regis Progre, Jose Ramirez, and now Tifimo Lopez. And he took a lot of punishment again tonight. So I think Josh Taylor deserves a good rest. Has he passed his best slightly? Uh, it's hard to say at this very moment. You know, I don't know how the weight cut might be affecting him and the layoff. I know he said the layoff, no excuses. And I don't want to take any credit away from Tifimo Lopez either. He was really on top of his game tonight. But, you know, Josh is now kind of in place too. Like, he didn't look his best at all against Jack Catterall as well. So, you know, he's going to need a performance just like Tifimo Lopez had tonight to remind everybody that he's still here. Finally, uh, Tifimo Lopez, what's next for him, in your opinion? Um, I hope he enjoys the victory. I know he's been going through a lot. I know he's been talking about this custody battle he has for his son. Um, but I really hope that he takes the time to enjoy it, get some rest, get some calm in his life. And hopefully we get a big fight against Devin Haney at 140 pounds. I mean, that is the money fight for me right now. You don't believe his post-fight comments like right afterwards where he told uh, reporters that it was, he's going to retire? Of course not. I, don't, I mean, I just don't believe it from any fighter that's in their prime. Uh, mm. You know, I didn't believe it when Tyson Fury said it, of course. So, you know, Lopez is emotional, and rightfully so. Was, I'm sure it was an emotional training camp. But I can't imagine he's retired. He's gonna, he has a lot to go up to give. He's 25 years old. He's going to make a lot of money and be in a lot of big fights for a long time, I'm sure. Just finally, Mike, actually, one more. You're the man in the know. Uh, everyone in England wants to know what's going on with this Saudi tournament. From your knowledge, uh, obviously Deontay Wilder came out and said he's been offered it. Uh, we believe Joshua has as well. What, what's your understanding of everything going on right now? My understanding is that you know they're, they're trying to put this together. It's a extraordinary attempt to put together you know, perhaps one of the biggest two fights cards in the history of boxing you know one of you seen two heavyweight fights of that magnitude on the same card it's not been done I don't you know certainly not in the last 50 years I don't think so you know to put together two fights four fighters all that money all those egos all those promoters it's not easy um, and it's really holding up the division right now I think while everyone tries to get that big bag of money for their fighter but it's gonna have to all get sorted, sorted and settled sooner rather than later so everybody can move on and be active and get these titles defended I think. I well, appreciate your time and uh, obviously everyone go check out your work tonight on ESPN.com. I appreciate, appreciate it. it, thank you.